Just this afternoon, about 5.15, we received the first call. The Sheriff's Department received the first call of possible damage due to the storms. We responded to that call down around the Vantown area. While we were down there, we got another call that there was a possible tornado on the ground close to the Flintville area. While we were working on that one, we got another call that said that there was a tornado on the ground on Smith Mill Road headed towards South Lincoln School. We only had a total of nine transports during this entire event to the hospital, seven injured and two fatalities. The two fatalities were John Prince, age 60, and his wife Karen Prince, age 44. Those families were notified immediately and those arrangements are being made. We would ask that you please respect their right to grieve. Good evening. I want to start off by telling you that I thank everyone that's been in this event with us today. Everyone's worked hard. Everyone's done a marvelous job. We're a good county. We're a very good county. Our people are the best in the world. We'll come back and we'll be better than ever. But I want to ask for your prayers for everyone that's uh, been in this, lost their homes, and uh, had so much trouble. Well, I thank you all for coming and everyone that's in the county that's worked, volunteers, people that's given food. I, I won't say all of the things that's been done because I miss some, but it's really been great.
start off by telling you that I thank everyone that's been in this event with us today. Everyone's worked hard. Everyone's done a marvelous job. We're a good county. I'm Peggy Bevels and I'm county mayor and we're a very good county. Our people are the best in the world. We'll come back and we'll be better than ever but right now we're a little bit down and so we asked everybody for their cooperation to help us get through this and we've got a lot of things that we've been discussing one of the things that uh, is most important to all of you all I'm sure is what our sheriff will uh, black welder will be telling you but I want to ask for your prayers for everyone that's uh, been in this lost their homes and uh, had so much trouble with all the things that's gone on at about this time yesterday and they say we're going to have another one today, but not like that one. <laughs> we're just going to have rain, maybe. But anyway, thank you all for coming, and everyone that's in the county that's worked, volunteers, people that's given food. I, I won't say all of the things that's been done because I missed some, but it's really been great. So I'll turn this over now to our Sheriff Murray Blackwelder. Can you introduce yourself, ma'am? I'm sorry. That was I'm Peggy Bevels, Lincoln County Mayor. Thank you. And what's your last name again? I'm sorry. Bevels, B-E-V-E-L-S. Uh-huh. Good evening. I'd like to thank you for being patient and being very cooperative throughout this thing. Uh, yesterday afternoon, about 5.15, we received the first call. The Sheriff's Department received the first call of possible damage due to the storms. We responded to that call down around the Vantown area. While we were down there, we got another call that there was a possible tornado on the ground close to the Flintville area. While we were out working on that one, we got another call that said that there was a tornado on the ground on Smith Mill Road headed towards South Lincoln School. Due to all of the damage, 
it took first responders quite a while to get back into the scene because of the other the other storms had blocked most of the roads with power lines and trees. They were able to cut their way in, get into this area down here, and the search and rescue began trying to assess what we had going on. It was a very chaotic several hours. Everyone worked hard to get to these residents. Everyone worked hard to find out where they needed to be and what they did. Once on the scene, we figured out what damage we had, what area was hit the worst. This tornado had touched down just off of Smith Mill Road, made a loop around and ended up hitting South Lincoln School dead ahead. The school, as most of you have seen, is probably beyond repair. We have many houses that are beyond repair. There are many people displaced. By the grace of God, we were able to get by with only two fatalities out of this mass destruction. We regret it for the families and our hearts go out to them. We only had a total of nine transports during this entire event to the hospital, seven injured and two fatalities. The two fatalities were John Prince, age 60, his wife Karen Prince, age 44. Those families were notified immediately and those arrangements are being made. We would ask that you please respect their right to grieve, okay? We have some information as far as the storm pass. We have flown it today, we've looked it over. We have not confirmed exactly what size tornado, tornado came through, but it appears from there, it appears that this thing was approximately two miles wide and traveled a length from the state line to the northeast corner of Lincoln County. As a result of that, power has been out throughout the east side of the county pretty much ever since the first storm came in. A projected date on getting it back on is unknown due to the level of trouble that, that this thing has caused with the lines, the trees down, and the destruction. I've got a few other announcements to make. Uh, we have had the cooperation of every agency known to man down here, and I think many of y'all have seen that. It's been a very, very good experience to have that kind of cooperation. National Weather Service, TEMA, Tennessee Highway Patrol, Department of Corrections from Tennessee Department of Corrections, the National Guard, Red Cross, Lincoln County Sheriff's Department, Lincoln County Emergency Medical, EMS, Lincoln County Volunteer Fire, EMA, Fayetteville Police Department, Lincoln County Sheriff's Posse, and I have probably left someone out and I regret that because it has been unbelievable the response we've gotten. Giles County Sheriff's Department came over has been assisting. The Franklin County Sheriff's Department has been assisting. It's taken all the manpower we had to work this scene. Tomorrow, there will be a new arrangement as far as volunteers are concerned, as far as people being allowed into this scene. We are still in a search and recovery mode. We are not in the repair mode yet. That being said, the information center will be moved to the Park City Baptist Church parking lot on 231-431 South. You will go there, news media will go there, all volunteers will go there. No one will be allowed into this scene without an armband, without going through that process first. We are inundated with traffic. We can't get our emergency responders in. We can't get our search teams in. We know you want to help. We know the volunteers want to help. This is not a means to stop that. This is simply a means to try and help us get this search and recovery over so that these people can begin rebuilding their lives. So I ask that all volunteers and all media please cooperate. 
that will be the information system. That will be the center that we will give all information out to and all information out at. With that being said, do I have any questions? And I, boy, that was a wide open one right there, wasn't it? Schools, what's going on with schools tomorrow and also where the system is going to go to go to south? I have talked to the school system. Uh, they will be closed tomorrow due to the electrical problems, electrical issues on this side of the county. It's my understanding, and you will have to verify this with Dr. Wanda Shelton, it's my understanding that they are looking at doing a half day for Flintville School and a half day for South Lincoln School until they can determine how they're going to fix this issue with South Lincoln School. Can you talk about uh, the school itself and how much more the tornado hit uh, there are people in there? What did they get out of there? Once again, we were very, very blessed in that situation. South Lincoln School was used as a storm shelter. Approximately 30 to 45 minutes prior to this storm hitting, they were they deemed that it was okay to go home and they all left and locked the school up. It was cleared approximately 30 minutes prior to this storm hitting. The school is basically going to be uninhabitable. So. I have no doubt that they would do that. The problem that it's my understanding the problem of the three southern schools in Lincoln County is they were already at capacity. So it's it's going to be next to impossible to split South Lincoln up. But now once again, Dr. Shelton, Dr. Wanda Shelton will have to be the one to confirm or deny that. Can you tell us about the seven injuries? As far as I know, none of those injuries were critical. They were all abrasions, cuts, bruises, you know, things that would go along with getting banged up pretty serious in a tornado. Anybody missing, Sheriff? No, we do, we do not know of anyone missing, and that is what we're working hard today to determine, and we hope by the end of the day to have that confirmed that we do not have anyone missing. There, No one has been reported missing. Where did the victims pass away? What road did they live on? They lived on Tipton Road. They did live in a mobile home, and it was it was blown quite a distance from its foundation. In terms of the number of structures damaged, the number of homes damaged, or even a dollar figure, do you have any sense of that? How much damage is done? Structures damaged are are destroyed. I guess you know. Structures destroyed, not counting the school, would be probably well over twenty-five. As far as being damaged, we have no idea on that number because everything between here and the beginning of this storm is damaged. Any idea how long the track is? I know you mentioned the southern part to northwest part of these parts. No, we haven't. We haven't figured that yet. Uh, you know, these these estimates that we have are basically based on a map. So we do know it entered Lincoln County and set down almost at the state line. And headed northeast and and raised up almost at the county line on the other corner. Sheriff, as far as the school being used as a shelter, how many people were in there getting shelter? Ma'am, I don't I, I don't know the answer to that question. Those were residents, not children, right? Or, or no, they were they were families. There were there were. Kids, okay. They'd already been dismissed. No, the school was was dismissed at 11:30 yesterday. So these were community members. That went to the shelter, went to the school for shelter. Well, I want to understand the school children are going to go where again? It's my understanding, and you need to talk to Dr. Wanda Shelton, who is superintendent of schools, to confirm this. But it's my understanding right now they are looking at splitting the day at Flintville between the Flintville school and the South Lincoln school. One will go half a day, and the other one will go the other half of the day. That's my understanding. That may simply be an idea that's on the table. You'll have to confirm that with Dr. Wanda Shelton. Park City Baptist Church. Park City. Yes, it's just south of downtown Park City. So. Sheriff, many of the victims I spoke to said that they heard the sirens when the first storm came through, but uh, many of them said that they did not hear the sirens before they got hit. Is there any reason to believe that the sirens may have malfunctioned or were not operating? 
No, ma'am. It's my understanding that this tornado just uh, just appeared out of nowhere. They knew they had a storm coming. They knew that it was it was it had the possibility. But from my understanding, there was only a few minutes to even get the notification out. And and from what I understand, some from some of the residents here, one whose house got completely destroyed, said that he heard it one minute before it hit his house on television. You need to take cover if you're in the South Lincoln area. We, we in law enforcement, it came as a surprise to us. I think it came as a surprise to pretty much everybody because once it appeared, it was on the ground. Right. From my understanding, radar didn't pick it up until it was on the ground. So it just spun up. What's your level of concern for the storms that are passing through? <clears throat> I've got some very good people that keep an eye on that and it's my understanding that the ones coming this afternoon are nothing to fear like we had yesterday. Is that going to slow down any rescue, recovery, cleanup efforts tonight? We're yeah. we are not in the in the uh, we're only in search and rescue mode at this point. We're so as far as that's concerned, we're going to continue to search until dark. We hope to have the entire area cleared as far as search by late tonight so that we don't have so that we don't have to start in the morning to try to finish that up hopefully that's the way it's going to work out that's where the national guard and all, all of these troops have come in they have been wonderful sure can so. you say and spell your name for us for everyone listening on the internet m-u-r-r-a-y b-l-a-c-k-w-e-l-d-e-r murray blackwelder There will be a curfew enforced starting tomorrow. We will start letting people in at 8 a.m. They will leave at 6 p.m. All non-residents will leave this perimeter at 6 p.m. In other words, all volunteers, any, anyone like that. Uh, the re there's reasons for that. We have, we have had a few issues just like y'all have everywhere else we have one of these where people that don't belong here appear and then we have to deal with that situation i spoke to some people who said you know we've had storms come through here in the past we've had tornadoes come through here in the past but this one was a little bit unique how so and, and why was this one so much different than others this tornado spun up and just appeared out of nowhere when you get right down to it. The thunderstorm that it was in, they did say was a dangerous storm, but they were not they were not giving any tornado activity out of it. And like I said earlier, once it appeared, it was on the ground. And I think that's where what made it unique is there was not any warning to it. Because y'all do a very good job of making people aware of of what's coming and and i don't i think this one caught y'all off guard also so or your weather people let me put it that way you covered. folks thank you very much for your cooperation and your patience